five-story building that will include nine residential units with commercial space on the first floor. Uh, for the record, the applicant has um, stated a December meeting and we deferred it. Um, we tabled it until this month, so um, if Mr. Fazzano would like to... Uh, Thank you very much. Mr. President, good evening. Dan Toscano, attorney, address located at 62B Commercial Walk East, Boston, Mass, 02110. I represent the, uh, the owner of the uh, property located at 124 <coughs> Salem Street, uh, Colin Yip, who I believe should be on his way. Um, unless, I'm here, unless you're going to sign off. No. All right, so I believe he should he should be here. I expect him to my immediate left. Uh, we have our architectural team. I think we're, everybody's been introduced, and people know the folks in the neighborhood. Rano, is my Sheila, and Deanna here. Um, who, the architectural team on the project. So we've been over this. Um, I'm going to point this in your angle so we can get a view of it so we know. So you're looking at the back of this is Salem Street where the old Sheldon building is. This is the corner where Dino's is. So here's our empty parking lot here. So the plans are to construct. Uh, the plans are to construct. Right now it's an empty parking lot. And Mr. Yip, oh here he is, Colin Yip, the owner of the property, um, bought the property and he bought the building next to it, which is the corner of Baldwin Place. So he owns the empty lot in the building here. So. We have plans to construct a 55-foot building and that as the architectural team will go over. It's slightly below 55 feet. I think it's like 53 something or 54, 54. 54. So, so 55-foot building at nine residential units um, in commercial spot on the first floor, which will be zoned for restaurant use. Um, I will go over some of the issues that I've heard uh, about what we've done in the past over the last several months working with the abutters and then the architectural team will take you through the plans and then we're more than happy to answer some questions um, go over it. So what we've done, and I think what this board has heard, we, we've done a tremendous amount of community outreach. We, we reached out to all our abutters in the particular area, especially all the owners of the properties within, um, right across the street, direct the butters within Baldwin Place, within Noise Place. Um, the most important part of that was mostly affected was the one Noise Place, which is John Corey. John Corey has four south side facing windows that will be adversely affected by this project because we would be blocking the windows. Um, the architectural team along with Colin met with Mr. Corey on a number of occasions and we were able to reach an agreement and I submitted a letter to the president uh, and to the board's records that it's a letter of support from John Corey um, that he would love to see this uh, property develop and Mr. Uh, uh, we'll just call him Colin because we don't need to be too formal and Colin has worked out an agreement with him. Now we're gonna work out with the windows. So as you see from the letter, John Corey does support the project. As I said, uh, when we, the, when the architectural team put together these plans, try to look at what the North then is, is about. How, how are we gonna, what residential units so we, we put together this four studio apartments, which there's four studio apartments on the second and third floor, and two, two on each side. On the fourth and fifth floor, you have one bedroom duplex. So the fourth and fifth floor, there's one bedroom duplex on each side. The back of the building, you have on the second and third floor, two two bedroom units. Um, and then on the third and fourth, I mean on the fourth and fifth floor, I'm sorry, on the fourth and fifth floor, you have a duplex unit that probably three plus bedrooms, over 600 square feet. So looking at the architectural plan, what we envision is what's here in the neighborhood. We have a lot of young professionals here in the neighborhood. We try to cater some of the young professionals, try to cater to the, the, the younger families here in the neighborhood. Um, and we also try to add a unit or two in the back units, try to keep some larger families with, with maybe two children, with maybe three children that could possibly uh, uh, purchase one of the condominium units. The first floor, and then we, when we discussed the first floor, the original plans, and we can go through if, if the, the board wants what the original plans were and all the concessions we've made and all the uh, changes we made to the project, but that would be entirely up to you. I know you've got a full agenda tonight. 
The first floor will be commercial use. Um, the original plan was to have some parking, because as of right now, there's some parking spots. We eliminated the parking and made it an entire commercial space and the front door, which will be located um, on the first floor. And the, the reason for that is just a, a, a number of reasons why we wanted to make the first floor um, continuous. I think we have one right photo, which is a very nice photo that Can shows the light of the uh, first yeah. floor. Oh, it's behind. There it is here. So you can see the new design of the, the first floor, how the streetscape is. It, and it just shows a continuous uh, glass area there, and it's indented a couple of feet. So, and, and the architect, uh, Frano, will go over to how the design was. And there's the front door. And it just seemed to flow a little bit better than having commercial space, a garage door, and then an, an open door. Um, so and that seemed to work a little bit better. And as we went out there the other night after our meeting before the, the Residents Association, we were looking around, a little dock in that area. And, and I know George is here from Monica's, and you can see what uh, a great job Monica's doing. When, you, when you're looking at it, you see the Monica's has the, the nice tall glass windows. He's got the tan lighting. It, it just lights up so nice. And I think what this here will complement Monica's in that area, that block, so well without all the busyness of the, the garage door and, and the, the front door and the commercial space. The other issue that we took into serious consideration that we brought up with, with a number of residents is public safety issue of, it's a busy sidewalk. There is a curb cut there, it's a busy sidewalk. We would have to put some type of beeping noise um, there if cars are coming in and out, um, whether, who knows what time, some noise there. Possibly, there's a lot of kids that walk by, a lot of elderly, families, what's not. And you just had to be very careful about going in and out of that parking garage. So I believe that making this, or the whole entire architectural team, and even with our pre-BRA design review, that and making it a full commercial uh, spot was much better for the, for the neighborhood in that area. So that really addresses the why there's no parking in this particular plan. Um, the other couple of issues, and I, We'll, we'll go over like the, the, the metal uh, front, the metal front, we decreased it by about 44% based on the feedback from our neighbors. Um, there are three roof decks on the, on top. Two of them, the two front roof decks were, they're all private roof decks, exclusive use of the owners. So the two front roof decks will have access from inside the unit out on top and the exclusive use for those two units. And the back roof deck will be just exclusive for the the three bedroom unit um, owner uh, owner occupant who's there. Um, on top of the roof, what we did, we made some slight changes because the original plan had 13 units. We had an elevator shaft going up to 65 feet. So what we did by adding the the private roof decks rather than the common roof decks, we were able to eliminate the elevator shaft to the roof. It went so, to 75. Yeah, it's from 75. So, it would have been brought it down to 63. So, so we were able to eliminate it because we had the private roof deck. So, what you see here is a stairwell, which we have to have um, for, for as a second means of egress. This head house will be for the use of the owner here, how we get the stair will be inside the unit, and this one will be set back here for the, the to get into that the private roof deck. Um, a couple of other issues that come up uh, were the visual from the streetscape to see these, the, the um, head houses, and, and I think it might be best if I pass it on, I may be talking too much, I'm going to pass it on to the final, the architectural team, to talk about the visual impact of, of the head houses from the street, which you, you really won't, won't see. Um, another issue was you, you saw the metal railing, which comes up to, um, a little above 55 feet and certainly not included in when you're calculating height and the reason being is because this building here is exactly 55 feet and that the ceiling sheet kind of slopes down a little bit and wanted to bring it to make it you know continuous to look like it's all level so, I'm turn uh, into an architect. <laughs> <laughs> so i'll leave it up to yeah. the architectural team great yeah thank you very much um I think Daniel's hit on quite a number of items uh, on my list here. Um, 
I think that uh, just picking up on the picking up on the front, uh, as he was saying, I think one of the things that we try to do is is get two things happening. One, the ornamental uh, ironwork comes up two feet above the 55, so it's at 57. Uh, it aligns with uh, Baldwin at that 57 because Baldwin uh, is, because the street does slope up, yet at the same time, you can see through the grill because the grill is quite open. So you will see, the, you will note that the building is not above 55 or just below something like 54, 54, 8 or 54, 9. So we're trying to do two things. Maintain the scale of the neighboring building, yet also maintain the 55. At the, at the same time. You can see that uh, here, this alignment there, and then through there you can see the 55. As Daniel mentioned, um, we've been working hard on this grill, trying to reduce the amount of density, which was a request. Uh, so we have reduced the amount of actual ironwork by 44%. So the thing actu is actually much lighter. There's less iron in it. We actually opened up, as you can see, and we can pass that over. You're all uh, we've, uh, we've tried to open up the grill as it moves up toward the top so that you don't necessarily have these sort of windows being the same all around. It changes the design as you move up, it opens up. We've maintained in terms of materials the wood at the base here, the dark wood to kind of uh, work in con concert with uh, the neighboring buildings. And then you have the wood on the soffit of the decks above, so you see a natural material. And there's the ability for uh, owners to uh, put things like plants so that you have that kind of transparency on the facade. One important thing which shows on that particular picture is how the first floor, we're not coming right out to the, the sidewalk. So the the design of the first floor is indented so we'll create the you know more space for pedestrians and also with the we see a lot of benches and plants that restaurants uh, yeah. both business owners or uh, residents how oh, that's even better put out there save some space yeah, let me, let me I say something about this one a little bit yeah. uh, just you know having lived here for for a while uh, and you know, just remember taking the <coughs> stroller down the street and just trying to get by on this particular side of Salem Street. It is really tough with the lamppost, the hydrants, and all the stuff. So uh, what what we've tried to do, as you might recall in the previous plan, was to provide that setback. But because we had all these kind of uh, uh, Net needs, for example, we didn't have enough commercial space, so we pushed the commercial space right out to the front. We had the garage door, had to do with the garage door, plus the entrance to the residential. By not having any parking, we don't have to have that tunnel effect, as Daniel pointed out. And we're able to really just have a very simple, completely set back. But it's not a straight line. It, it kind of goes back at an angle, sort of comes out again. You have a little bit of a prow here. This is where the uh, commercial <coughs> space would be. This is the entrance to the residential. And you know, light-filled, uh, generous. People could put benches here. Uh, you could a line could form there instead of like in the middle of the, of the sidewalk, and just kind of practicalities. Um, just while I'm at it here, in terms of the the, uh, the, the masonry, uh, we've maintained brick. We do think it's important to have the the masonry here uh, in the context of the north end. There were comments about the uh, proportion, the amount of brick. So we've maintained this window here to reduce the amount of brick. We've provided a band at this point, which has some alignment with the neighboring uh, restaurants and provides a little bit of detail, which I think is a nice transition from the residential uh, condo to the, um, to the commercial below. Can I ask you a quick question? Yep. Is that glass behind the grill, like the, like floor to ceiling glass? Those are the windows. Okay. Yeah. It's not floor to ceiling. Yeah. So this this is the this is glass which is set back uh, in the balcony, and that is uh, goes from about we don't have it right to the floor, but it's about a foot from the floor, and it goes to about what about. Eight inches from the ceiling, so. You can see it in the model if you'd like to look at it closely in the model. 
It's a, yeah. So I'd say it's probably about seven feet of glass. Um, moving around the, the back of the building, uh, we've uh, maintained the courtyard with some of the units uh, in the back. This is the second floor. I don't know if you, you uh, the, the council recalls, but it's the, the floor above the commercial. So this becomes a kind of a collective space here, which is acoustically kind of um, protected from the street. It's a kind of a quiet, quiet, cool space from Salem. Uh, all the neighbors can look out. This is the second floor uh, large unit, which has uh, use of a portion of this space. Then these units have their balconies, or everybody could collect down here if they want. This also acts as a second means of egress uh, to go out through the back and onto noise, which I'll point out in the, uh, in the plan. I'm sorry, go ahead. No, I was going to touch upon noise plates just so we know there were some concerns of using noise plays as a means of egress. It's only an emergency exit to get out. So there will be a lock on the door so we cannot get in through noise plays. And I invite, the, yeah, I invite, the, invite the council members to come up in the model. We've actually built the gate. We don't have a lock. So we have the gate in the back uh, to show you exactly that you can't, that there's a deterrent. You can't just walk up through here and it's a, it's a panic bar to get out. So it's, it's a bar. Uh, and you can see that, thank you, Diana, you can see that right here. So from that courtyard, this is that courtyard that you just saw, uh, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a fire event, a smoke event, you would come out of here, walk down here, out here, panic bar, and go out to the street and come here for, for refuge. Um, and other than that, it's just a, a, a benefit for the community to have access to that terrace. And I think that you understand uh, the, the way the units are configured uh, in terms of the second floor having three units, second and third floor having three units, the fourth floor having three units, but they're big units. That's how we get nine. Okay. So two other issues that we touch upon. Uh, one that was a big concern of the neighborhood and residents uh, is a trash room. Um, we are putting a trash room that is in the building. The trash will be down into the, go down into the trash room and it will be taken out by the property manager. There is a plan for recycling. However, there's not a recycling bin. The concern was people throwing glass down there and, and, and you know, causing noise and, and uh, disruption. So there's a trash room. So there's a trash room. And also, as the city promotes bike lanes, Holland uh, is putting some bike racks, which I think you'll see right in the back, and which will be in the courtyard. That will be a sign to the yeah. The owners of the uh, the units. Right. So that's the back of the building. That little court. Yeah. That's there's, there's only access from the building to that. Right. Correct. Yes. Correct. Private. Right. right. Yeah. So, I, I think the uh, I think this process has been very helpful in terms of being able to get comments from uh, not only uh, everyone here in this room but also the the, the neighborhood. The VRA has been helpful. I think that bottom floor has been the has, has benefited probably the most, and I hope that it's going to benefit the. the the, uh, the street and the north end. But now you have 1,867 square feet of commercial space, which is very flexible, um, very accessible. You have bikes stored uh, for those uh, for those residences that Colin is going to provide uh, the locks for, and even the, even the bikes he tells them. Um, and um, so I don't know, as, a, as, a, as an architect, as a professional, I, I've appreciated this, this, this process um, in trying to make this building better. But, so, that's about it. Um, well, we appreciate you coming back yeah. and taking the information we gave you previously. Do I have a hearing date, February the 11th? Any, anyone on the council have any questions? I mean, I, I have some construction questions. And, um, what, what's the, what's, what kind of timeline to... Um, you know, to complete a problem is pretty big. I mean, pretty months. tight. Logistics months. are kind of tight over there. Well, 12 to 14 oh, months. Okay. We want to push for 12. Yes. We, we've committed to the neighborhood that Colin is right now is interviewing with contractors. Once we he's hired a contractor and we put together a construction itinerary, we will pass it on to the neighborhood council and the resident association, and that could be then we share, of course, with the director of artists. But this, by eliminating the parking 
that eliminates the digging. It may be just a little flush for just the foundation, and then everything else is just kind of built on top, and it's a wood foundation. Everything's clean. There's no, you know, or limits the dust, limits, you know, hopefully limits the noise, but it'd be a very clean project because everything's coming in clean and known it's just built right on top. So the only limited digging now is just just to make sure it's the foundation is structurally, uh, structurally sound. Do you mind if we look yeah, at the, fa the facade? But like I just, oh, I'll bring them all real quick points because I- Do you want to see the, the facade? This I, yeah. Is I, the facade. I mean, I know like you're not that far away, but I, I can't, is it a brick building? I can't figure it's out if it's a brick building, if it's all glass, it's- it's primarily it's, uh, a brick building. Yeah, quite so, so, okay, so look, if we can see if, if you just remove exactly. the other side of sandals. Okay, you remove this too. <laughs> okay, so that, that makes more sense. So, so just going through it, this is brick. Okay. So on the both sides. So on the both sides, we're kind of very That is the iron work. That's the ornamental iron work, which is the same. Material is this. It's half by half, just about the size of my finger. So, so that's what I said. But it's not silver. It's it's, it's yeah. what color is it? It's wrought iron. Yeah. 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 Yeah
How big are the three bedrooms square foot wise? The three bedroom, it's three bedroom plus, it's over 1,600 square feet. Oh, I thought you said feet. 600 square feet, okay. 1,600 that, square that feet. That was right. back in the old days. Okay, all right. <laughs> I, I thought you said 600. Grew up in the <laughs> okay. Yeah. Thank you, Daniel. <laughs> Check your car, I'll tell you. <laughs> Any questions from the audience or Dali? You said you looked all around the North End, and what made you come up with this type of design? Because to me, I don't feel like it fits in the wrought iron, fits in with all of the buildings that are around the North End. I just we actually get kind of fits. They can answer the architectural team, but I think that it came from number one, the, the building right next to the Colin Holmes, but especially across the street at 121 um, Salem Street, which has a maybe 15 to 20 residential units on the condos, has all the wrought iron balconies. What about well, balconies? A lot of wrought iron. Wrought, iron, wrought iron going right across. Mm -hmm. the Victoria, the clean uh, tail of the building, it has the wrought iron fire escape that go right across. So and I think that- Fire escapes. Yeah, those are fire escapes. It, you know, this, the, the this is necessarily- more like fire, a modern design yeah, yeah, versus so, I mean, the I, old brick, not that building. Absolutely, and, and I think that was the idea. So it was kind of bringing something a little more contemporary, yeah, contemporary. But, but something that fits in with the wrought iron and the brick. And the brick, as we see, you know, people had some concerns with the brick being plain. There is a design, so it, it fits in um, a little more design. So it's just not plain brick. I mean, going I, in some ways, when, when architects work with with pallets of materials, and we wanted to work with a minimal number of materials, which was brick. It was the iron work. And like you know, living here for almost 30 years on North Bennett Street, I had a I had iron work outside the plants I live now and Prince Street I've got iron work. I live iron work. I know it just seemed like a it does seem like an appropriate material to use to provide the kind of scale and lightness that we that we really think is important. We don't want to we didn't want to bring a heavy building in here and we felt like this is that you know, provides that lightness that that is so characteristic of North End. But I, I know we can. Yeah. Anyone else? Anyone want to make a motion? I would make a motion for support. 124 126 Salem Street. Applicant's name is Colin Yip. Seeking zoning relief to construct a five story building that will include nine residential units with commercial space on the first floor. The applicant, applicant did appear at one of our previous council meetings. Anyone second the motion? I do. Motion been seconded. Um, David, a uh, motion has been seconded by George to uh, the 124-126 Salem Street, uh, seeking zoning relief to construct a five-story building that will include nine residential units with commercial space on the first floor. All in favor. No, Ryan? Okay. Did you get your hand raised, Dan? All in favor, raise your hand really high. All in favor. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight to three. Support. Congratulations. President, neighborhood council, thank you for the opportunity to be here. Thank you for the support. Thank you. Thank you.